So welcome to my ADI test, talk through, watch my train of thought, see how I answer these questions, see if it helps you. If you are thinking of taking your part one train to become a driving instructor. So question one of a hundred, you're at the scene of an incident, why would you move the casualty if he was unconscious but still breathing? So straight away I'm thinking you wouldn't, so the only reason is there is other danger. So because the ambulance is on its way, nope. Because bystanders advise you to do so, nope. Because it will clear the road, nope. Because of further danger, that's the one I'm going for. It always seems to be further danger, so I'm happy with that. Question two of 100, what is the most common cause of skidding? Now, when I first trained to be a driving instructor, I would always think, oh my goodness, weather, or I've got into a car where the tires are not, you know, not in good condition, or the road surface. But none of these are the one. It's always gonna be the driver, because the driver should be able to know what the weather is and deal with the weather. They should be looking after the vehicle and make sure the vehicle's in good condition, or the road. They should see the road is slippery, signs, mud on the road, ice, and they should change their driving. It's always a driver. Now, I always used to get this one wrong. Didn't make sense to me. Now it does. There you go. Question three of 100. You're intending to turn right at crossroads. An appropriate, appropriate appro approaching driver is also turning right. What danger exists if you turn in front of each other? Okay, so that's turning in front of each other. It's gonna be what they call a um, near side to near side turning right. So the approaching vehicle will block the view of oncoming traffic, oncoming vehicles. So approaching driver is also turning right. Let's have a look. So you're going like that. No, so they should not do that. The time it takes to turn will be increased. Not sure about that. Your veer of the offside mirror will be blocked, maybe. The angle of turn will be tighter than if you turned behind each other. Mm. Now the approaching vehicle will block your view of oncoming traffic. Yeah, potentially. Let's go for this one. Could be wrong, could be right. There you go. I'm thinking I'm right, but I don't know yet. You're driving at night. When would you dip your headlights earlier than normal? when you're approaching a left-hand bend, when you're approaching a right-hand bend, when you're approaching a bend on a downhill slope, when you're driving uphill. When would you dip your headlights earlier than normal? Oh, this is gonna be a difficult one, isn't it? When you're approaching a right-hand bend, uh, I'm probably gonna go a right-hand bend. Five out of ten, what should you do, do when you're driving on a motorway and you miss the exit you want to take? This is always good, Just always carry on to the next exit. You don't want to make a U turn, you don't want to ever reverse carefully, reverse on the hard shoulder. No, it's got to be this, isn't it? Okay, so remember just to go over again, there will be four categories, and I have got to be scoring consistently on these at least over 80% in each category. So which light should you use if you have to park on the road in fog or so I'm definitely parking light, dipped headlights, dipped headlights and fog headlights, main beam headlights. Now I'm thinking to myself, um, if I'm parking, I'm going to leave my car for a while. So I'm going to leave parking lights. Cause I think if you leave your dipped headlights, you're going to have to leave your keys in the ignition on. What should you do before turning left from a busy major road into a minor road? So oh, look out for vehicles in front and maybe stop them. Mm, sound your horn, pedestrians on the road, don't know about that. Move out to the right to make sure the turns are easier. Remember, you should try and keep position. So always select first gear, I don't know, first gear and approach that. So it'd be look out for vehicles in front that may be stopping, that's definitely it. What should you do if overtaking a vehicle cuts in close in front of you? 
accelerate to get close to the vehicle, closer to the vehicle, I don't know about that. Drop back and leave the correct separation distance, that's, that's in my potential box. Give a long blast on the horn, nah, you don't want to do that, you don't want to be aggressive out there. Flash your headlights several times, going to be drop back, isn't it? Going to be drop back. Okay, which vehicle is most likely to follow an unusual course at a roundabout? A state car? Mm, delivery van? Nope. Milk float? Mm, very slow, but not sure about that. Um, long vehicle? It's going to be long, isn't it? Next one. You're driving towards the left-hand bend on a country road. What should you do? Uh, what should you anticipate if there are no pavements? Okay, so driving towards a left-hand bend. So that would be um, adverse camber. Hmm? No bend marker post. I'm not sure about that. No white lines showing the edge of the road. No nope. pedestrians walking in the road. I would say they got to walk towards traffic. So pedestrians walking in the road. So, yep. You keep well back while waiting to overtake a large vehicle. What should you do if another car fills the gap? Sound your horn, flash your headlights, no, be aggressive. Drop further back, yep, that's potential. Or start to overtake, no, we always drop further back. Uh, there you go, let's have a go on this one. You're reversing your car. Which road use will be especially hard to see? Motorcyclists, cyclists a car driver or a child well i'm going to go with a child because they're smaller they could sort of be under your vision so let's go for a child but all of them really but probably especially hard to see will be a child what should you do if your vehicle gets a puncher while you're driving on the motorway uh, use the motorway telephone and call for assistance use the motorway telephone and then change the wheel Change the wheel yourself, drive along a hard trail to reach the next service stations. Well, let's call for assistance, eh? Because why would you sort of use a mo uh, the, the telephone and then change the wheel yourself? Um, change the wheel yourself, potentially dangerous. Drive along the whole trail, I don't know, it could be very dangerous. So, well, add that. What should you do if you want to overtake a slow tractor but you're not sure? If it's safe to do so, follow another overtaking vehicle, flash your headlights, oncoming traffic and overtake, sign your horn signal for the tractor to pull over, wait if you're in doubt. I would always say wait if you're in doubt, not sure, don't do it. Okay, what should you do when you come to a place where elderly people are crossing the road? Wade them across so they know that, you, they, that, that, that you've seen them. Mm -hmm but the vehicle behind might have not. Rev the engine and let them know you're waiting. No, we're not doing that. Be patient, allow them to cross their own time. Potential, tap the horn in case they are hard of hearing. I'm gonna say be patient. You're turning right at crossroads. An oncoming vehicle is also turning right. What is the advantage in turning behind the oncoming vehicle? An oncoming vehicle is also turning right. What is the advantage in turning behind? You'll be able to turn uh, without stopping. You'll have more time to turn. you use less fuel because you can stay in a high gear. Uh, clearer view, because I think the other one you had less of a clearer view. So let's go for this. That's what they call the near side to near side pass, I think. When may you drive on footpaths to overtake slow moving vehicles if no positions are near, when the pavement is very wide to get into a property? Well, that's when I drive into my drive, so that's probably the one I'm going to choose. <laughs> it's, it's the most obvious, and sometimes that's not obvious, is it, that you drive on the pavement to get into your property, if you're lucky to have a drive. What are the traffic calming measures put in place? To stop road rage, to slow down traffic, to help overtaking, to help parking. It's always going to be slow down, calming, calm people down in their speed. 
uh, what should you do if you can't see clearly behind when reversing? Uh, I always tell my people, if you can't see, not open the window and look behind. Look in the near side mirror, no. Open the door and look behind, no. Ask someone to guide you. I always say, get out. But if there's someone around who can guide you, then that's the most obvious one. So, yep. What is the speed limit most likely to be where you see street lights, um, but no speed limit signs? This is one that you need to be ingrained in your mind. It is 30 miles an hour street lights, no other signs. You're the first person to arrive at a scene of a motorcycle crash. No other vehicle is involved. The rider is unconscious and lying in the middle of the road. What should you do? Well, this actually happened to me a couple of years ago. It was about five o'clock in the morning. So move the rider out of the road. I did not do that. Clear the road of debris. I did not do that. Warn other traffic. Give the rider reassurance. I actually did warn other traffic. There was a guy coming up the road. So that would be the danger. That would be, you know, the most dangerous thing if a car didn't see him. That's the way I thought, so that should be good. You're in a line of traffic. What action should you take if the driver um, behind you is following very closely? Ignore the following driver and continue to drive within the speed limit. Mm. Signal left and wait the following driver to pass. I don't know why you would do that. Slow down, gradually increasing the gap between you and the vehicle, one in front. Yep, that seems to be it. Move over to a position just left of the center line of the road. I'm going to go for that. You're waiting to turn right out of a minor road. A large vehicle is approaching from the right. Why should you wait even if you have time to turn in front of it? Oh, sometimes you read it and it doesn't go in. So let's break it down. You're waiting to turn right out of a minor road. So I now can see a minor road. A large vehicle is approaching from the right. Okay, I've got that. Um, why should you wait even if you have time to turn in front of it? Large vehicles can hide an overtaking vehicle. Large vehicles are difficult to stay in a straight line. Okay, don't know about that one. Large vehicles are unpredictable. Mm, large vehicles, oh, didn't mean to do that. Um, large vehicles have priority. I'm gonna go, because they're large, they're probably hiding, and they could hide overtaking vehicles, so we'll add that. When should drivers use a center lane of a three lane motorway? Ah, you should know this one. When overtaking slow moving vehicles in a left hand lane, when driving at a constant 50, uh, 60 miles per hour or less, when overtaking vehicles in the right hand lane, that you know, see how that you could fall for that because you see the word overtaking. And then when driving at a speed between 60 and 70, it's got to be when over slower moving vehicles in the left hand lane. Always drive in the left unless you're overtaking. You want to reverse park a car between two vehicles on the side of the road. As a guide, what would be the minimum size suitable for parking? One car limps, two car limps, one and a half car limps, two and a half car limps. Now, 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 this is one that you could make a mistake on, right, yeah? So in the test, you are asked to reverse park within two car limps, right, yeah? But here it's asking as a guide, what would be the minimum size for suitable parking space? So. It's one and a half car lengths. Okay, see the difference? So if you know about the test, you'll be thinking two, but I think it's one and a half. Little trickster won that one. Have a look for that one. You're approaching a Pelican Crossing. What should you do if the amber light is flashing? Now the amber light flashing is just on the Pelican and it's give way to pedestrians who are crossing, very similar to a zebra crossing. When the Alicia beacons are flashing, if there's no pedestrians on you, just keep going. If there is, you have to wait for them. So only continue waiting for nope. Encourage waiting pedestrians to cross, and they should never encourage people to cross. Stop even if the crossing is clear. No, so it's give way to pedestrians on the crossing. I'm pretty sure on that. What color the reflective studs on the left-hand lane on the edge of the motorway? Or well, left-hand lane is where the hard shoulder is, or if there's no hard shoulder, it's going to be just like the edge of the carriageway. So red is pretty much don't go there. 
dropped so I'm going for red white is normally in the middle of the lanes amber on the central reservation green is the slip roads so I'm gonna go for that you park on the left facing uphill in which position should you leave the steering wheel ah oh, this is the one you always got to think about so you park on the left all right facing uphill so if the cam brake went broke and the car would start rolling back if the wheels were straight it would just roll back but if you had the wheels turned to the right then the wheels would jam against the curb so i would say turn to the right yeah i'm thinking so you've driven for a fall what should you do when you're out of the water okay so check your tire pressure i don't think so accelerate quickly no nope. switch on your headlights nope test your brakes because they're, they're wet there you go you're driving towards a level crossing what would be the first warning of approaching train hmm both half barriers coming down no because you could be on it couldn't it so one half barrier is coming down that's potential a steady amber light twin flashing light so i think on those ones it's a steady amber light and then the red lights how will a convex mirror affect appearance of the following vehicles they seem to be nearer they seem to be further away they seem to be clearer they seem to be driving faster well we can do the driving faster one away i think it's actually convex mirrors are there to help you see more of the blind spot but the downside is they make things seem further away what are you advised to increase um oh sorry not what when are you advised to increase your tire pressure so they are higher than normal when you're filling the fuel tank when you are driving in cold weather when you will be driving on very rough roads when you'll be driving high speeds it's actually higher speeds over long distances but i can see anyone who has fought cold weather i can see why you're doing it and driving on very rough roads i can see why you're doing that as well to be honest with you. but it's actually that one i think we'll check at the end day eh? um oh god you are looking for somewhere to park your vehicle neither you or your passengers are disabled what should you do if the only space available are marked for disabled use? Well, my dad had a stroke and it's annoying if someone parks in a disabled space. So, parking spaces because everywhere else is full? No, nope. use these spaces because of the disabled markings aren't enforceable. Nope, double park in the aisle for switch or hazards on? Nope, find somewhere else to park unless you're a registered disabled driver. Gotta be, isn't it? You're on a long downhill slope. What should you do to help control your speed? Select neutral? No, that's just gonna, you're gonna go like a go-kart. Turn off your engine? Well, I want my engine braking, I want something. Slow, select a lower gear. So a lower gear is gonna give more resistance, so that's a possible. Apply the parking brake. No, it's what it is, parking brake. Never put it on while you're moving. Gotta be that one, isn't it? How should you drive on a road where there are humps? So it's maintain a reduced speed throughout possible. Always keep to the maximum uh, maximum legal speed limit. Mm, don't know about that. Accelerate quickly between each one. Drive slowly at school times. I'm gonna go this. I'm thinking. Um, what should you make sure? Um, why should you make sure that your indicators are cancelled after turning? Oh, so this is to avoid. Um, flatten the battery i don't know about that one i don't think that would have flattened the battery to avoid dazzling other road users that's the indicator so it's not going to dazzle to avoid misleading other road users so big possibility to avoid damages to the indicator relay no so it's misleading you imagine if you turn left and then you left the indicator on people might believe or think that you're turning the next left 
and then you'll find vehicles are pulling out in front of you. Um, why are yellow lines painted across the road? Oh, to show no overtaking. Nope, it's not that one. To make you aware of your speed. To warn you to choose the correct lane. Nope. To warn you of the change spirit. So actually called rumble strips. And the quicker you're going, the noisier they are. So it's to warn of the change of... Oh, oh well, there you go. See, look, I'm falling for it. To warn you of change of speed limit. No to make you aware of your speed limit. You see, see how you could fall for that? You might know about the speed, but it's actually this one. Okay, a question 38 out of 100. What does it mean if you see a vehicle showing flashing green light? Mm. Can I know this or you're not? This vehicle is being used by police or non engine duties? No. Nope. The vehicle is being used by road safety patrol? Nope. The vehicle is being used by doctor? Yeah. The vehicle is being used to carry a wide load there, that'd be amber. So there you go. What shape is the stop sign? It's the only one that this shape. There is no other sign out there. Octanical. Oct <coughs> Sorry, gone. Uh, how does a puffing crossing operate? A sensor holds the light on amber for traffic while pedestrians are still crossing. Potential. And a sensor holds lights on, uh, lights on flashing amber while a pedestrian is still crossing. Nope. A sensor holds the lights on red for traffic when pedestrians are still crossing. Um, yeah, sounds better. A sensor holds the lights on green uh, for traffic while pedestrians are still crossing. So I think it's going to be red. Because there is definitely a sensor because they're pedestrian, pedestrian user friendly interface. Um, but Amber, can you see? You could easily go for the wrong one there, but red. Uh, which road service may cause anti lock brakes to be less effective? Again, I used to get this one wrong all the time. Dry surface, no. Firm surface, no. Good surface, no. It's a loose surface because if you're braking anti-locks when it feels the wheels lock it releases the wheel so you don't skid but on a loose surface you could eat you'll be sliding um and and then it just releases the the wheel so you could actually be less effective it's also less effective in snow if you ever go skiing you build up snow in front of the ski which slows you down Anti-lock brakes on snow, thick, heavy snow, actually releases the wheels and that snow goes again when you want that snow to build up and stop the vehicle. And driving a vehicle that has automatic transmission, how are you advised to negotiate corners safely? Select the appropriate gear for speed required and lock it in position, not sure about that. Use the kick down facility, that is like, if you need to accelerate or get away quickly. Uh, so I don't know why you're doing that. Uh, slowly turn before the corner. Accelerate gently as you turn. Brake gently while driving around the corner. So this is a weird one. You don't want to brake gently while driving around the corner. Use the kick down facility. That's accelerating. You don't want to do it on a corner. Slow the appropriate. You don't want to be selecting gear. So it's slow down before the corner and then accelerate gently as you turn. Got to be, surely. You're driving along a dual carriageway and you have to brake hard than a straight line which wheels do most of the braking oh this is it does the majority i think it's something like 80 percent of the braking 80 85 percent it's evenly distributed between the front and rear wheels it will alternate from one side to the other nope the rear wheels nope the front wheels and that is the reason because as you brake firmly the weight of the car goes forward if you had stuff in the car it's always goes forward so the weight the wheels at the front do most of the braking i'm sure it's about 85 percent actually there you go how does anti-lock braking system help you control the car during emergency braking remember i was saying it lets the wheels um so when it fills them lock it releases the brakes automatically uh, that was developed by mercedes-benz i believe abs by allowing you to apply condensed braking so that word candence braking if the car didn't have abs then you would brake when you feel the wheels lock come off the brake back on the brake come off the brake like pumping the pedal 
So I don't think you want to be doing that with ABS. By making the boats more powerful, I don't think so. By preventing the wheels from locking, oh, there you go. By taking over responsibility for your driving. No, we're not fully there yet on autonomous vehicles. So by preventing the wheels from locking up. You are driving over a level question. What should you do if the warning lights come on and the bell rings? Get everyone out of the vehicle immediately. Now that's an easy one to fall for. Keep going to clear the crossing. I will be doing that. Stop and reverse back to clear the crossing. No, stop immediately. No, it's keep going. But you can see why. If the car broke down, you want to get everyone out. But if you're driving, just keep going. On a motorway, where would you see green reflective studs? So we've talked about this a little bit. Um, green reflective studs are where you can sort of join or come off. So that's got to be on slip roads, um, entrances and exits. Yeah, that's what it's got to be, isn't it? Between the hard shoulder now, that's going to be amber. Between the carriageway and the central reservation. Uh, no, sorry, hard shoulder and the carriageway is red. Between the carriageway and central reservation, that's amber. Separating driving lanes is white, so it's going to definitely be that one. Where would you see a contraflow bus and cycle lane? On a dual carriageway, on a roundabout, on an urban motorway, on a one-way street. Um, so, urban motorway on a one-way street. Contraflow, contra to the flow, one-way street. There you go. Um, what is the purpose of continuous white line along the side of the road? Oh, you know, sometimes people see lots more stuff than it really is. And it's actually to show the edge of the carriageway. Uh, not parking zones, not 30 miles an hour, not a level crossing. It's just the edge of the carriageway. Um, why would you fit chains to your wheels well i've done this when i was driving in poland in awful snowy weather up in the mountains so prevent damage to the road surface nope to prevent skidding in deep snow that's why we used it to prevent wear to the tires nope to prevent the brakes from locking no i'm going for deep snow that's why we had to use it it's good as well why should what should you do when you're driven through a flood stop and check the tires check the exhaust stop and dry the brakes test your brakes so i don't know how you would stop and dry your brakes but you would test your brakes you see easy to fall into that one exhaust nope though you can see why they're saying it for a flood you've got to keep the revs up um in a manual and slip the clutch so you can keep the pressure coming out of the exhaust stop and check the tires now so it's test your brakes uh you have a pupil with color blind okay so how will this affect their ability to drive? They must have a doctor's license certificate allowing them to drive. There is no, they are not legally allowed to drive. They are allowed to drive without restriction. They must have glasses with special lenses. It's actually they can drive without restriction because if you ever think about a traffic lights, it's not, it is the colors, but it's also where they are. So at the top, red and then amber and then green. So, no restrictions on that. Um, how are we now? Oh, hang on. You need glasses to bring your eyesight up to required standard. When must you wear them? In bad weather conditions, only when you think it's necessary. At all times when driving, only in bad light. Uh, it's going to be all times, isn't it? If you need glasses. Uh, what should you do if you're taking drugs that are likely to affect your driving? Seek med medical advice. Only drive if accompanied by a full license holder. Limit driving to essential journeys. Only drive for talk distances. Always going to be medical advice. If it's there, it's going to be that one. A police officer asked to see your documents. You don't have them with you. How long do you have to produce them? Okay, you either know this or you don't. I think there was a song back in the 80s, seven uh, seven uh, seven day producer so it's seven days seven days uh, if you are caught say a long way from your house say you live in England and you're caught in Scotland then you can produce it in a police station near your house but it still has to be done in seven days within seven days uh, you're teaching the pupil has to turn the um, 
it, teaching the pupil how to turn the vehicle around. Can you remove your seatbelt while you're teaching this exercise? Yes, but only when asked to do so by the pupil. Yes, but only if the pupil holds an exemption certificate. Yes, you may receive your, remove your seatbelt during any manoeuvre that involves reversing. Impossible. Mm, uh, yes, you may remove your seatbelt, but only when the vehicle is actually reversing. I think it's involved reversing. I think that could be a tricky one there, but we'll see. See if I'm right, eh? Why should the candidate do when the examiner gives the signal for emergency stop? Brake promptly, press the clutch, check the mirrors, steer to the left. Now you always think you're told, check the mirrors before braking, but in an emergency stop, you um, brake straight away because otherwise, whatever the emergency is, you would have gone past it. The examiner does check behind him to make sure the road's clear if he's telling him to do it, so it's going to be brake promptly. You're driving at night, when can you park on the right hand side of the road? When you park on a one way street, when you park uh, less than 10 metres, 32 feet from a junction, when you park with your off side parking light switched on, when you park under a lamp post. If, out of all these, I'll be doing the one way street. Okay, so you know, you, you see parking lights and you might think, oh, I use that one, but it's one way street. A car a driving test candidate with sight and only one eye passes a driving test. What restrictions will the examiner place on the license? The license will be strict to vehicle engines uh, less than 1500cc. I don't know about that. The license will be restricted. To adaptive vehicles only no the license won't be restricted the license will be restricted to daytime driving only if they've passed a test i don't think they're going to be restricted which light should you use when you're driving in daylight and it's foggy side lights hazard warning lights full beam lights dipped headlights always going to be dipped pretty much so you want to be seen Sometimes it, it doesn't help you see more, but it can, does help you be seen. What is a cover note? Okay, so a driving license, registration document, temporary insurance certificate, MOT, cover. It covers you in the insurance. It's, they seem to send out the insurance certificate pretty quick now because of email and what have you. But a cover note back in my day could be written by your broker to say you are insured. A car fitted with dual accelerator and clutch and brake pedals. Which of these pedals must be removed before the can be, car be used for the test? So clutch and brake, clutch, accelerate and clutch. It's just the accelerator. You can have a brake, you can have a clutch. Uh, the accelerator, I'm guessing that the reason why I wouldn't have an accelerator if anything happened, um, such as the car drove into another one, who, who's to blame? How would the note wasn't the examiner? How would the note the pupil? That would be a difficult one for the insurance to go out, so it doesn't have accelerator. Okay, when can you use your front fog lights? When you're dazzled by oncoming vehicles instead of the main beam lights at any time, so you're noticed when visibility is less than 100 meters. Gonna be this one, guys. Not to look cool, it's visibility. You're parking on the road at night. When should you use parking lights? When you are in areas of white lines in the middle of the road, when you are facing the opposite direction, when your speed limit exceeds 30, when you're near a bus stop, I'm thinking when it exceeds 30, use parking lights. Um, you're teaching a pupil how to reverse the car into a side road, so reverse around the corner. What should you teach them to do if the rear near side tire gently touches the curb? Um, drive forward to straighten the car and then continue reversing except that you're not ready for this exercise and drive off drive around the corner to where you started and start again keep going backwards and mount the curb well never mount the curb i think it's drive forward to straighten the car and then continue reversing yeah i wouldn't go all the way back to the beginning i don't think i'm definitely not going up the curb and <laughs> Definitely not accept that you're not ready. What is the lowest level insurance cover you can have to drive on the roads? So fully comprehensive is everybody's covered. 
personal injury could have that without even having a car third party only or third party fire and theft a lot of people will go for third party fire and theft it's actually third party that means if there's an accident where it's your fault they will get paid other people will get paid but not you so that's the minimum how many years how many years after the newly registered registered must cars in great britain have an mot one five seven it's three years disabled drivers difficult turning their head what will help them overcome this disability when they are driving special seating being allowed not to wear seatbelt additional mirrors automatic transmission could be automatic transmission couldn't it but it's additional mirrors Which vehicles aren't allowed in the right hand lane of a three lane motorway? So it's vans, vehicles towing a trailer or caravan, motorcycles, motorcycles fitted with a sidecar. It is actually something, anything towing. Um, who can accompany a candidate on the driving test? I always used to get this wrong. Anyone age those were 16, no other person, only their driving instructor, only a family member. I think it's anyone over the age of 16 i used to put down driving instructor <laughs> what do you need to do before you can drive legally break down cover mm, helpful proof your identity and helpful vehicle handbook insurance cover it's a legal requirement to have insurance so that's got to be the one isn't it you're driving with your front swag lights fixed on what must you do if the fog is cleared well this is the thing lead them on <laughs> no, flash them to warn other traffic is falling out. Switch them off as long as visibility remains good. That sounds good. One drive in the morning instead of headlights. No, it's got to be that, isn't it? Um, what restrictions are placed on someone's driving license if they are blind in one eye? They only are permitted to drive while they are wearing glasses. The driving license isn't restricted. We know that one. They're required to have additional mirrors fitted. Nope. They aren't permitted to drive a motor car. I'm going to go with this one. Similar to one of the other ones, actually. You're driving at night. When can you park on the right-hand side of the road? I'm sure we've heard this one before. When you're in a two-way street, when you're a built-up area that has at least from junction, when you keep parking. When the road has a street light is when you're on a one-way street. Yeah, one-way street. Entering an area of roadworks what must you do if you see this sign uh i'm not not exceed the speed limit treat the speed limit as advisory no obey the speed limit during rush hour no obey the limit except for overnight i'm i'm gonna not not exceed the speed limit you find that your eyesight has become very poor who must you inform what, uh, who must you inform if your optician says they can't help you so that's going to be always the licensing authority if you provide demonstration on a skill and lesson how should you follow up with the opportunity for the pupil to check understand and then consider consider that by practicing with a discussion of possible faults that may occur with detailed analysis of the maneuver carried out with the introduction of a new subject so this one with the opportunity for the pupil to check understand and um, yeah 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 i'm going with that what is the most important task at the end of every driving lesson arrange the next lesson encourage your people to reflect on their performance go over any mistakes that have been made set an objective for the next lesson so i'm going to go for encourage the pupil to reflect their own performance what can be established through an appropriate use of an open question? Pupils' attitudes to normal motivation and learners' drive. The pupils' degree of aptitude, psychomotor skills. Mm. So psychomotor skills are like, you know, doing stuff in the car. The pupils' level of practical and empirical knowledge. If the ID and pupil have any interest in common, but we're not that one out. So it's going to be this, isn't it? Pupils attitude norms and motivations when learning to drive i would say 
You're teaching a pupil to move away on a downhill gradient. What advice would you give them about the gears? Use the lowest gear available. Use the highest gear available. Use the appropriate gear for the gradient. Use the lower gear than normal. So if you're on a hill, you want to be the highest gear, really. So if it's a big hill, you could start in second or even third. But it's an appropriate gear for the gradient, I would say. Which expense is likely to increase as a result of being convicted of drinking, of driving one fit through drink? Let me tell you something here. It's the big one is always going to be the insurance premium. You get caught for drink driving, you, you, you want to be a drinker and a driver, then you will get hit by insurance. They don't want you. Why do motorcyclists often wear bright clothing? They must do so by law. Bright colours are very popular. It keeps them cool in the summer to make it easy for other road users to see them. So uh, we thought about this before. It's not law, but it makes it easier for other road users to see them. What major advantages does a pupil gain from agreeing learning objectives? They have no need to ask questions of the instructor. Oh, I'm not sure. They know what is expected for them to be able to evaluate their progress, but possible. They'll be able to drive a vehicle responsibly with concentration practice. No, they'll know when they're ready to take a test. I'm going to go this one. You're teaching a pupil to move off the side of the road. Why should you teach them to look around to check that there's nothing in the blind spot? Yep, to avoid failing their driving test. Well, potentially, but... Not at that point, because the mirrors may not be adjusted properly where well, they should be, to check the road signs and speed limits. No, blind spot, can't see in the blind spot, it's blind. <laughs> You've just taken some cough medicine given by your friend. What should you do before you drive in your car? Ask the friend to take your medicine affected by driving. No, they're not a doctor. Check the label to see if the medicine could affect your driving potentially. Drink some strong coffee, nope. Drive a short distance, nope. So. How should a driving instructor approach each lesson? They should use flexible, adaptable methods to match the pupil's progress. They should keep strictly to their prepared plan, nope. They should have relaxed manner, encourage their pupils to do whatever interests them. Mm -hmm. uh, they should always include a maneuver give value for money no flexible be flexible and adaptable what is the most likely outcome of using attainable learning targets for pupils under instruction if they're attainable it would make me feel better so they provide reinforcement of the pupil progress as possible their result in the pupil being ready for a test too early too early what does that mean that's weird I'm not going to use that they'll make the pupil struggle to cope with them Mm, they make the learning progress longer than normal. I'm going to go this one. You're teaching a manoeuvre that involves reversing in the road. What should you teach your people to do? Look to the rear over the right shoulder. Look to the rear over their left shoulder only. Mm, see, I don't like the only bits. Scan all around, paying particular attention to the direction that you're, which you're moving. This sounds good. Look in the rear using only the mirrors. No. Scanning's good. You're teaching a learner driver who is following a slow moving vehicle. You can see a junction ahead on the right. What should you do? Overtake after checking the mirrors and signaling. Not sure about that. Accelerate quickly to overtake before the junction. Don't try to overtake until you've passed the junction. Slow down and prepare to overtake on the left. No. This one. The timing of directions of um, the timing of directions is very important. What is the recommended method? Well, that is alert, identify, direct. A no, alert, direct, identify. A D I at the road. Next road, turn right. So A D I. Alert, direct, identify. 
direct, alert, so direct, identify, alert, so alert, direct, at the next road. Mm. <coughs> I think it's alert, identify, no. Alert direct, it's got to be alert, it's got to start with alert, direct, identify, alert, identify, direct, so alert, at the next row, that's the identify, direct, it's got to be that. So it is ADI, and you might have been told ADI, but can you see how confusing it could be? You could just pick one of those out of those two, but it is actually alert, identify, and direct. You've been able to drive due to illness. What must you do before you start driving again? Always see a doctor, be satisfied you're medically fit to drive, take smaller dose of medicine, take your medicine, you drive. No, see a doctor, get straight. What should you do if you teach your pupil about changing lanes on the motorway? Uh, you should increase your speed before changing lanes. You should signal well before using your mirrors. Okay, now it's MSM, isn't it? So you should maneuver first and signal note. You should use the MSM routine in good time, of course. What could you do to guard the risk of a vehicle fire? Um, so it's check out the strong smell of petrol. Definitely. We're nearly there, people. Typically, how long does the age? Um, typically, how does the aging affect people's driving ability? Older people take more risks. No, but I don't think so. Older people have slow reactions possible. Older people overestimate their ability. Mm, don't think so. Older people drive faster. It's potential slow reactions. You're teaching the pupil to stop. What should you teach them about using the gears to help them slow down? Second gear should always be selected. Changing gears isn't always necessary. A downward gear check gear gain should be made. First gear should always be selected. Gears are for going, brakes are for slowing, so it's changing gear isn't always necessary, I would say. Your doctor's given you a course of medicine. Why should you ask that it will affect you? Um, drugs make you better to drive by quickening reactions. No, that's not true. Some types of medicine can cause your reactions to be slow. That's possible. You have to let your insurance company know about the medicine. No, the medicine you take may affect your hearing. Not hearing. Slow down reactions. You're following a large vehicle approaching a crossroads. The driver of the vehicle signals to turn left. What advice would you give your pupil? I would say it. Mm. Um, overtake, you can leave plenty of room. Don't overtake until the vehicle begins to turn. Overtake only if there's no oncoming vehicles. Don't overtake when you're approaching junctions. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Don't overtake until your vehicle begins to turn. But how do we know? It's a large vehicle, don't overtake when approaching. But then don't overtake when approaching junctions. You could overtake if someone was turning left. So you're following a large vehicle approaching a crossroads. The driver of the vehicle signals to turn left. What advice would you give the pupil? Um, don't overtake until the vehicle begins to overtake only if there is no oncoming vehicles. You see, it should be simple, this one, but... Um, uh, don't overtake when you're approaching junctions, but you could have been the vehicles are turning left. You can don't overtake until the vehicle begins to turn. I'm going to go with this one, but also I want to go with that one. Overtake if there's no oncoming vehicles, but we'll see at the end. Let's see what I've done. Uh, part MSM routine is referred to abbreviation PSL. What does PSL stand for? Well, it's position, speed, and look. But I talked about lifesaver before that motorcyclists know and people might go for that. But it's actually position, speed and look. And it's this one, I'm sorry. Um, here we go. What does the cost of vehicles insurance company, when does it normally reduce? 
It's when you're not under 25, it's when you're over 25. You just see the 25 and go for it. How much verbal instruction is needed to help a pupil attain a good standard of driving? A constant amount throughout, regardless of competence, mm, just enough. I'd say it's always got to be just enough, hasn't it? Just enough is basically telling you what it is. Just enough. Your pupil's knowledge of driving and competence improve. What's likely to happen to their level instruction involvement? Well, for me, I shut down a bit, I shut up a bit, I decrease. So, here we go. Um, a few summary. I got a hundred. Brilliant. So all of those answers that I did were correct. I hope they were all correct with you. I tried to make it so I was showing you my thought process, where I'd gone wrong in the past, and where potentially there are pitfalls. So have a look. Sometimes it's worth doing the test with me, just marking down on the sheet and seeing if where where you kind of went, whether you agree with me. Okay, so um, I hope, hope that helps you because this ADI uh, part one test can be quite difficult.